Right, childhood cancer remains a leading cause of death, death related uh, disease related death amongst kids in America. And now the federal government is doubling down its investment in research using artificial intelligence to speed up a new treatments and some cures as well. Let's take a closer look at this now. And uh, we're going to bring in uh, Anat Matabuchi, uh, the executive director of Emory's Empathetic, uh, Empathetic, Empathetic AI for Health Institute. New sounding right sounds high tech welcome to the show thank you for having me all right how transformative could uh, ai truly be in the fight against childhood cancer talk to us about it uh, so great question i think that the opportunity for artificial intelligence particularly in pediatric cancers and childhood cancers is tremendous one thing that we should acknowledge is that traditionally there hasn't been as much investments for pediatric cancers so this new announcement is really a big deal. And the reason I think it's a big deal is because artificial intelligence has a huge role to play in helping to really help identify those kids that may not have as aggressive a disease and therefore potentially reduce the aggressiveness of the treatment because we know that these treatments like radiation, chemotherapy, can have long-term effects on these kids after they become adults. And so the power of artificial intelligence is in helping to identify those kids that could potentially benefit from less intense therapies to fight their cancers and yet provide them the appropriate outcome for those cancers and yet spare them the long-term impacts of those treatments when they become adults. Mm -hmm. what, what other kind of breakthroughs are possible when you combine AI with the data that we already have in, in hospitals across the country? Great question. I think there's so much that is embedded in routinely available data like electronic health records like radiology scans, pathology images, where AI can really go in and mine for subtle patterns, subtle features, subtle attributes that humans may not be able to visually discern. Mm. And this can tell us so much about which kids are potentially likely to respond to certain treatments, which kids may have, like I said, less aggressive disease and therefore might benefit from less aggressive treatments. The other opportunity is for uh, delineating the, the tumor extent or the disease extent mm -hmm. on an imaging scan. For a human to go in and do this, to identify the target that is going to be treated with radiation or chemotherapy is a time-consuming manual affair that takes a long time. AI could do this in seconds. Mm. And that's where there's a big, big opportunity to really speed up the workflow and improve outcomes for kids. Do, do you think that AI would possibly be able to detect this earlier um, is that possible? I think that's a great question. So some of the work that we're doing in our group has shown that we could potentially start to identify hallmarks of these disease years before they become manifest, before the actual diagnosis happens. And I think that's, it sounds a little bit like science fiction, but I do think that these tools, these algorithms, these approaches can help start to identify years in advance that some of these diseases like cancers might manifest. A lot of the work that we've done in our lab has focused on adults, but I think there's a huge opportunity to use those approaches in kids as well. Yeah, what, what are you most optimistic about when you look at this, when it comes to AI's role in this uh, over the next decade? Great question. I think the big opportunity for artificial intelligence is really around treatment selection. Let's face it, today, when it comes to cancer, we still don't have adequate tools. The physicians, the oncologists don't quite have the tools to help identify what is the right treatment for the right patient. And that's where I think artificial intelligence through combing and combining information across our electronic health records, across imaging data, genomics, can start to come up with a much better profile of exactly which patients, which kids in this case, are going to truly benefit from certain treatment regimens. So I think the big opportunity going forward is using AI to match the right treatments for the right patients. Okay, Anat Marabucci, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.